thing is going. All right, we're doing it. Hi, I appreciate you doing this, man. Yeah, of course. It's super cool of you. Um, so this is a fire pit uh, that we're gonna roast marshmallows on. Okay. And this is to put out the fire in case of emergency. Um, I have my, oh, the marshmallows are there. They're all the way there. Okay, give me a second. <gasps> So this has been in my van. It might be a giant uh, chunk of marshmallow at this point. Okay. <laughs> it might have melted together into a single, a sing a single marshmallow. Uh -huh. but would you like to do the yeah. firing? Is it kind of like, it was like straight rubbing alcohol? <laughs> yeah, 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 it, it is. All right. It it's, uh, works surprisingly well. Yeah, there you go. Oh wow! Okay. Yeah, see, that was gonna be like a bomb. Going yeah, yeah. Up. Um, it's it's uh, it lasts for about forty minutes or so, and uh, yeah, here. That's actually uh, really cool. Yeah, right. It's super yeah. neat. I mean, th this is just an ad for this thing, essentially. Huh. Um. Well, do you want to introduce yourself to my trillions of followers? Yeah. Um. I'm Tad Retz. Um. I guess I'm a a full time painter. I do mostly landscape paintings but um i paint whatever whatever's in my what ha whatever happens to be in my daily life that i find inspiring yeah um and i sell the paintings <laughs> nice <laughs> yeah well I, I guess uh the thing i've repeated at the beginning of every podcast pretty much i guess it's a routine now where it's like the point of this is not to talk about technique or like how to paint better how to learn anatomy yeah. or any of that kind of stuff it's more like why do you paint in the first place because mm -hmm. it's hard it's not something that's like uh, easy. It's not something that's like, um, at least practically more beneficial than like studying investment banking or real estate or something, mm -hmm. you know, but obviously there's like a reason to make images. There's a reason to do it in oils, especially, you know, Yeah. it's like you, you've chosen something that's difficult to do and difficult to make a living off of. And you've been successful surviving off of it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, definitely. Um, yeah, I think, I mean, one of the reasons why I have always been drawn to oil painting. I've always had like a like an interest in trying it out myself. Is just um, there's something about uh, going to museums when I was younger and just having that um, like I don't know that there's something about it. It just struck me right. differently than anything else, any other kind of interest. There's something so like magical about walking into a museum and seeing like paintings that are hundreds of years old and um right i don't know i like being able to like be a part of that yeah. in a way like not saying like my paintings will be in museums ever but like right um just like giving it a go yeah yeah is like so um fun to me right yeah, well, and I think it's, uh, for me, it's been strange, like, traveling so much around the country and, you know, in Europe most recently and just seeing how many paintings there are in general. Like, you can go anywhere in the world and find, like, yeah. a masterwork painting that's, like, the best painting you've ever seen, like, every day if you really look for it, mm -hmm. you know? And I guess the nihilistic point of view is to be like, oh, everything has already been done, why should I contribute what I have to say, you know? like there are enough oil paintings why should i why should i do this mm -hmm. you know, there are enough movies there are enough animations or enough whatever if it's m music you know it's like why is my contribution worth you know me putting all, in all this effort to go and try and do it you know yeah um and ultimately I'm, I'm finding that it's way less about the actual end product and it's way more about the actual process of doing it you know yeah definitely um there's a lot of joy in the process but also a lot of frustration and anxiety depression and like all the emotions come out in the process um and i i think we started talking about this at at one point but like the kind of like the the process of like um kind of um finding who you are Finding out a little bit more about you through the process. Yeah. And like not necessarily the painting, but learning a little bit or working through my own 
like personal problems. Right. Um, because when I'm when I'm painting, it's a very, um, like, very intimate, like intense process, right. and I'm just doing like a lot of, um, like deep thought, and it's a lot of times at this point now I'm not even really thinking about the painting as much. It, I like go into like a very deep, um, kind of just like self. Um, exploring thought process yeah so and that's important to me because um i don't know i feel like when i'm when i'm creating something and i'm going through that process it's a lot healthier for me than if i were to just be sitting on the couch staring at nothing absolutely like digging into myself and trying to figure out why i'm going through well, it's a problem. And, and I guess the thing is, that would be easier, right? It would be easier to just sit around and watch Netflix. It would be yeah. easier to just sit around and eat cupcakes and do nothing, you know? Mm -hmm. um, and the fact that, like, you know, the fact that we're able to find meaning out of what is objectively just rubbing oil on cotton, you know? It, it's like, and you're able to create, um, you know, these artifacts, these, little, like, physical pieces of who you are that people want mm -hmm. enough to actually, you know, buy them from you and, again, to support yourself. You know? Yeah. Yeah. Um, and I was talking, I've been talking to a lot of people about this, but it's like, why as a society we have we placed so much meaning on, uh, like, painting in general, you know? And I really believe that there's, like, a, a deeply spiritual element to all this stuff, where, like, uh, I've said this before, but I think, you know, the same impulse that people have to, like, go to Comic-Con or to, like, work in games or, like, learn from specific teachers is the same impulse that pe people have to, like, go to Mecca or something, you know, mm -hmm. go to like a religious site to like be with God. Like people will like make a pilgrimage from Europe to go to brainstorm or make a pilgrimage from like, I don't know, Montana to go to uh, like the grand central atelier. Yeah. You know? yeah. Um, and to me, it's like when you do a painting, it's like, again, it's not about the actual like um, thing you're painting necessarily. It's an artifact of you being like, you like pursuing something greater, you know, mm -hmm. or you being present in at least in some small way. Yeah. Um, or like taking something that's relatively mundane, like a, a river or a creek or a, a rock or something, mm -hmm. and then calling attention to it just by like making this little, you know, like yeah. 18 by 24 small, you know, small painting. Mm -hmm. Definitely. I don't know. I, I think it's very cool that we can take rocks and then create you know, objects that represent rocks and then they're suddenly worth $50 trillion or something, you know? Yeah. And in the, um, I don't know, it, it's, it's a lot of times it's finding a, um, a very abstract way of showing that, right. um, object. And it just happens through these, these few, um, laws of, nature like right. form value edges things like that like you can create the illusion that it is a rock on well, canvas or whatever the craziest thing to me is like you could probably like when i was at the watts atelier i could i could tell which teachers did which which drawings even though they might be drawing the same exact thing with the same exact medium at the same exact time i could mm -hmm. tell based on their strokes like who they were you know yeah. and it's like you know, we're able to have these very fundamental tools. It's like value, uh, color, um, shape, composition, and we're able to communicate exactly who we are with just like, you know, how dark is that, you know, value relative to that color, you know, to that mm -hmm. value, or, you know, how much you like red more than blue, you know, with that, uh, somebody might be able to tell your paintings apart just based on what colors you like more, you know? Yeah. And, to, I'm sure you could like look at a bunch of different air, plain air painters and tell exactly who did what just based on yeah definitely. you know their 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 choices. It's called style, but yeah. it's it's so much more. Yeah, like it, I think it's corny to call it style. Yeah, like um, I like I I was the, I mean everyone goes through this. It's like how do you find your style? Like all this stuff, and then. Um, without even really thinking, it starts to develop on its own. Yep. You just have to live and try and experience a bunch of different things, meet a bunch of different people, um, all in the process of painting, and you'll develop the 
the little ways of doing things that work for you individually and it will never be the same right for um i mean if you happen to paint similarly to someone else um or like too similarly chances are you haven't found your style yet yeah i feel like because you haven't dug deep enough right well and again and that's totally okay Mm -hmm. you know it's like i don't think the goal of art should be to get a style i think that you know finding of a style has a lot more to do with wanting recognition and wanting yeah like wanting to have a big ego rather than Mm -hmm. just doing it because you love it you know because like i mean we talked about this yesterday where it's like i think everyone um is saying pretty similar things. I mean, again, everyone's using the same tools. They're actually, a lot of them are painting the same subject matter. Whether you're in concept art or illustration or plein air painting, it's like, if you're in concept art, you're probably going to do matte paintings of uh, a guy with a, you know, a rifle in the foreground and then him just looking at like a spaceship. You know, yeah. <laughs> you're probably going to do that at some point. Um, and if you're, um, you know, um, planar painter you're going to paint mountains you're going to paint mm-hmm. creeks you're going to do all this other stuff and it's not about being unique at all i think it's about just like following who you are organically and i think when you're not pursuing it when you're like that stuff just comes out organically yeah the, the thing I, I i think is like um people have plenty of anxiety in their own lives and they don't want like i think when somebody's not when somebody's art isn't resonating with somebody it's because um, fundamentally what they're communicating is like wanting recognition and anxiety and people don't want that in their they, they don't want more of that essentially yeah. you know yeah. um, and yeah it's uh I think if somebody wants to paint landscapes or they want to paint furry porn or you know and that's authentically what they want to do they should they should go for it mm-hmm. yeah um, definitely if, it, if it's deep down if it if it's meaningful like truly meaningful to the person then it'll it'll show and come out yeah. and and it won't be in, in a predictable way yeah absolutely. like I didn't think I was gonna be um I don't know there's a few subject matters that I keep coming back to and if you told me I was gonna be doing that like a year or two ago yeah um I wouldn't have been able to believe it right? believe it yeah and that goes with a lot of the different things like meeting the people I've met um, doing the things that I've been doing yeah. like this that we're yeah, doing like right now like right. If you told me I was going to be doing this or um, having the relationships with other painters that have been heroes right. to me um, if you told me that a year ago it just I wouldn't have believed it um, and yeah. it all just happened organically mm-hmm. um, I might not have met the artists that I thought I was going to meet but I've met different ones that are equally interesting and have helped me and I feel like I've helped them in some ways mm-hmm. too um, not just like getting better or whatever but it helped me as a person and right. they've helped um, make connections for me and right. connections with other people and connections in my painting like connecting points that mm-hmm. were a little fuzzy right for um, yeah well, I, I think it all it all comes down to just like live living your life yeah um in a in like a in a generous way um having good relationships and um experiencing what the world has to offer and then um within that creating paintings working on creating and um it within that like creating it'll um those things will things will just happen yeah, and for sure. you'll get better and um, it'll, they'll be, they'll create ma- meaning and um, yeah, it's more yeah. about the, the life side of it instead right. of the painting. If you devote all your time to painting, it'll, right. um, it, it'll be lacking a little bit with um, emotion. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, and again, it's like people can tell when somebody's being dishonest, when somebody's mm-hmm. just wanting to get money or attention or something, you know, yeah. it's like, um, Again, I, I find it really strange that somebody can find an entire lifetime of meaning just by painting, you know, painting, painting landscapes. You mm-hmm. know, I don't strange in not a bad way, but it's mm-hmm. like somebody can find an entire meaning, lifetime of meaning of, of like throwing a ball around as like a baseball player or a football player or something. You know. Yeah. And I think a big part of this stuff is like 
realizing that the world is so incredibly big that there's there's place for everybody mm-hmm. and no matter how weird or bizarre you think your interests are you know there's a place for you to exist and be able to make a living and contribute something to society and do and uh make something that fulfills your soul in a way that doesn't make you depressed you know mm-hmm. like you don't have to um work in an office if you don't want to you don't have to um like you don't have to do anything and uh, often I think the thing holding people back most isn't necessarily like um, their competence or their dreams it's it's like their permission to go and do it mm-hmm. you know it's like they're um, they don't think that if they tried something they'd be successful at it yeah and you'd be surprised I mean not you specifically but people would be surprised like how little you need just in general like yeah. You you um you can take these huge risks and um and you'd be surprised like how you can make it by with little less than you than you're taught to believe. Oh, for sure. Like yeah. like you're you're doing fine living in a van. And yeah, I like think I have like twenty square feet to live yeah. in. So and, you know. and like I've I've taken huge risks with um like I don't know quitting jobs and. Yeah like buying a house like yeah. things like that and um just figuring it out as i go and you you figure out a way to make it work right. and um yeah and, and you'd be surprised like the or in general people are, would be surprised with the um how much people want to help when you oh, for sure when they see that you're um like inspired to yeah. create and um inspired to um, travel because they see a little bit of themselves in that too. Yeah, yeah. Well, and I think it's. I mean, I think the human spirit admires uh, struggle and admires, you know, um, actual creativity. And I think, I mean, just doing the whole van thing, I've been surprised by how kind people are. You know? mm-hmm. um, the thing I repeat to people is like, this is a firm I believe that like some kind of God exists in the sense where I can go anywhere and people will feed me, people will talk to me and tell me about their lives, and you know. Um, when I open myself to, up to it, that's when stuff really starts happening. Yeah. And I think there's a there's like a beauty there. And, um, it's never about how good you are as an artist. It's really just fundamentally about what you're saying. And mm-hmm. Like, I I equate technical skill to punctuation. You know, it's like I don't know what an ind- independent clause is at all. You know, <laughs> it's like I don't know what a semicolon is. I, can't, I could not define like. I use I use both of those things every day, you uh-huh. know, but I couldn't define what they are. And I think if I spent all my time just trying to learn the ins and outs of, of language, I might um, be holding back uh, or like losing out in the contribution I could give to the world because I'm just focused on um, saying it well versus actually saying it. Yeah. Um, I was talking to Brian Mark Taylor about this, where it's like often the the art that I admire now is not the technical stuff. It's it's stuff that's like really honest and really brave, mm-hmm. and, it, and it's often the stuff that's like not very not very good. You know? mm-hmm. It doesn't necessarily look great. Yes, yeah. same same with me. Yeah. Um, yeah, I I mean I had I felt like I I knew all the the best painters or whatever in the in the country and in the world a few years ago and um I was like okay well I know them all now I just have to try to be like them yeah. and and then that'll be that um but now like I I have a much larger appreciation for many different types of art and a lot of times it's like or most of the time now like you were just saying like it's completely different from what I would try to do yeah. um and I like it more than like I don't know one of those big name artists that you would um, yeah. generally people look up to, right. or that would be on the cover of magazines today and stuff. Yeah. Um, because it's yeah, like like you said, it's um, you, you you sense a um, like a, an a more, like an honesty. Um, it's different. Yeah. yeah, it's it's different, and I find. Um, not comfort, but I, I find something interesting in it knowing that I could never paint like that because it's so different from what I've yeah. 
um, had in my my curriculum in a way. Yeah. Up until this point, with like with some with some like big like abstract painters, for right. example, like I just um, it's so much different. Yeah. And I love it because. Yeah, yeah. Well, I think it's I, mean, I think it's okay. Like, I like a lot of the mainstream artists, but you know, if I just if we talked about the same thing every day, that would get really boring. Mm -hmm. You know. Like, you just can't consume the same media over and over and over again, you know? Like, I like The Godfather, but watching The Godfather every day would make me super depressed, you mm -hmm. know? Um, I need, like, Avatar The Last Airbender mixed in with The Godfather, you know? Yeah. Um, or, or, like, The Schindler's List mixed in with, um, I don't know, like, Rick and Morty or something. Mm -hmm. you know? And um, the fact that they can both exist, like, this super serious Holocaust movie and a movie about like or a TV show about like a guy and his grandfather or, or yeah, a little kid and his grandfather going on space adventures and you know it's like they can both exist and both be meaningful and and, um, uh, and not step on each other's toes mm -hmm. and, um, yeah yeah so and yeah again with the mainstream artist stuff it's like there there is a level of like they're running a business, you know. They have they have to kind of stay in their lane, so you kind of know what to expect from them. Mm -hmm. Whereas with lesser known artists, they're of equal value or more value because they're like they don't have any. They have more freedom to mm -hmm. to be kind of crazy, you know. Yeah. Um, yeah, that's so true. I I love that with um, I, I guess lesser known artists having that um, that flexibility to be able to. Um, change roots whenever and I, I hope to stay on that in that path for as long as possible um, I hate seeing uh, I don't want to mention the name but I talked about an artist last night that um, stuck creating the same art over and over again and he just has to f to be financially stable and yeah. everything but I I say this now it might change but I I don't want to be s financially stable yeah. I don't think. I mean, there's comfort in it, yeah. but um, I have the most fun painting when I'm not financially stable, <laughs> when I'm taking huge risks. Yeah, yeah. And so I want to continue that well, yeah, yeah. my whole career, I think. Well, I, I think I think to make that as an act of choice is more of like a... Like, you get something out of the struggle of it, you know? You get oh, yeah. something out of, like, Definitely. you know, the... Uh, like the reason your painting has a has like a success and failure thing it's like oh if I don't if this painting doesn't sell it's not good enough then I can't pay my mortgage mm -hmm. you know, which is a lot of like external pressure like oh yeah this is like something that's actually important you know yeah. and the world is so big man it's crazy it's like it's hard to walk like I've been in like maybe like 40 cities 30 cities I don't even know how many cities in like the past two months or something that's insane <laughs> Um, and just seeing how they're all cool, they're all awesome. You can see amazing paintings or architecture, meet great people, and all of them is like, it's like, how do you def how do you narrow down what's important at that point? How do you narrow down like, um, who do you talk to? Where do you spend your time? What city do you live in? What do you do with your time? You know, and the answer is is like, you can't if you just like see, try and see everything. You know, you can't. Like, I, I feel like in a sense this trip has been it's been amazing, but I also have become a little bit more of a nihilist because I'm like, oh, there's so many people I could just do whatever I want. I could you know value whatever I want, which is true, but it's also like, um, um, you know, there's a, um, there's just too many things. You know, um, you need to like you need some amount of uh, struggle and. Uh, you need some amount of uh, meaning in your life that is like specific to you, you know. Mm -hmm. We were talking about this yesterday, where like I've been to so many places and met so many people, but I'm craving some amount of external structure just to like, um, like get more high, high like resolution on the things that I want to spend my time doing. Mm -hmm. like, I can't focus on art as much because I'm uh, like moving around so much. I don't have like a space to like focus on doing a painting necessarily yeah. Um, yeah. whereas when you have a, a house and stuff you have move you know space to move around and 
mm -hmm. um, a place like you're not worried about being kicked out of where you're sleeping. And <laughs> yeah. Yeah. The, the whole meaning thing is like somebody could find an entire lifetime of meaning out of making strawberry flavored marshmallows, you know, or making portable fireplaces, or making Yeti microphones, or recording a podcast or something, you know. And um, yeah, I, I, th I think it's really important to pay attention to the stuff you value and the stuff that you think about, because, um, you know, to do otherwise, I think, is potentially like a uh, leaving yourself up to kind of being depressed and stuff. Mm -hmm. Like reset the oh yeah to keep I right, so I um this has two bars which I think will be okay for recording just in case I, I put down the camera charger somewhere I don't know where but it's still a totally thing hmm. figure it out just get your van podcast <laughs> yeah. um well and I, I guess it's a um like. I mean, we were talking about this yesterday, but you're a full-time painter, right? But you also need to, like, get have balance in your life as well. Like, yeah. Um, just painting all the time and doing exactly what you want isn't necessarily conducive to being super happy. You know? mm -hmm. Yeah, I thought it was. <laughs> um, until I had the time and freedom to do it all the time. Then I found myself just wanting to have a life instead yeah. of painting right um so I'll, I'll i'll fill my day with with other things and then put in a few hours of painting yeah and that feels like a day well spent when um i don't know when i when i work on the house yeah. see my family walk walk my family dogs and then get a little painting in it at night yeah. like that'll feel like a good day if i spend the whole day painting i'm kind of miserable yeah, well, and I, I meet so many people who are like, um, they they really just want to paint. They think if they could just paint all day, then their lives would be great. You know, they're working in offices or something. And yeah. They're like, oh, if I just like lived in the in you know, um, out in the boonies, or I lived out in the you know, in uh, the Midwest, I would be able to, like, just focus on my art and have a very simple life. And it's like, mm -hmm. it's not necessarily that simple. Like. You can't just do exactly what you want all the time, otherwise it's going to become tedious and boring. Yeah. Um, like, I, I'd imagine a lot of the time you'd rather rake the leaves in your yard <laughs> rather than, like, paint a picture, you know? Yeah, uh, you, you that might, was the case yesterday. <laughs> well, you, you might rather, like, do your taxes yeah. sometimes than paint mm -hmm. a picture, you know? And it's, um, like, again, it's strange how the human brain works. Like, you'd expect, like, once you have the ability to just have the thing you've always wanted you would just want to do it all the time mm -hmm. it's, uh, it's not not true like the grass is always greener yeah uh, uh, something that's special to you is it has like a inflated um, like specialness yeah. when when you only have a little bit of time to do it um, yeah and that can be I don't know, say, say you look forward to watching a show on Netflix every yeah. night, and then all of a sudden you have a whole day to do it. It's yeah. like, well, why would you spend the whole day watching yeah, yeah. Netflix? Like, there's so many other things to do. Right. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. and that, that analogy can be made with, with anything. Like, Yeah. Well, I, I'm reading Dune, right? Have you read Dune? No. Well, well I guess, um, I don't want to spoil it, so I won't, I won't talk about Dune. But I think it's like... Um, I guess I'll use the Bible as an example of what I'm talking about. Where, like, so, so in the in the Bible, there's a story where you know Jesus walks through the desert for 40 days and 40 nights, and the, the devil says to him, "Well, why don't you just turn the sand into bread and wine? Then you wouldn't have to be hungry." And in a sense, that's like a bad thing to do to just solve your problems in the next mock in a way because then you stop having problems and you stop having meaning. You know, and it's like once you could just like. Um, take the meaning out of your life, take the struggle out of your life, then, you know, what do you have? You have mm -hmm. nothing. You have nothing to do. And, mm -hmm. um, it's like, if all we had to do was just, like, watch Netflix and eat cupcakes and the world would be great, then I think in a, in a day 
shit would get fucked up pretty quick, you know? <laughs> um, and uh, when it, as it relates to painting, it's like, um, like I was, t- I was talking to you just about this yesterday where like, I suspect I could not pay you money to stop painting, you know? If I was like, here's a billion dollars, but you can never paint again, you'd tell me no, you know? Yeah. And thinking about that, it's like, you can solve all of your objective problems and everyone else around you, their objective problems as well, just with a billion dollars. Like, you can, you know, buy your parents a nicer house, you could buy yourself a nicer house, you could, like, help solve malaria, you mm-hmm. know, and world hunger. Yeah. And knowing that, you still wouldn't make that decision, it's like, that's that's good. You know, I think that's actually, uh, like, um, like, that's something, like, painting is something you're supposed to be doing, you mm-hmm. know? Um, and I guess, uh, like, that logic of, like, oh, I, I have a billion dollars, I could just start valuing um, solving malaria, you actually mar- might cause more harm than good, and you yeah. will have lost the meaning in your life as it relates to painting. I was gonna say something, but I forgot. <laughs> um, oh man, what was it? Do you want? More? Um, no, I'm good. One marshmallow this early in the morning is good. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but um, five is probably bad. Oh yeah, I, so I was, um, I was thinking like with um, just let me know if I need to. Oh yeah, like a pause or something. Okay. Um, with finding meaning and stuff, um, it's it's an interesting um, path to be on because like I I feel like I'm I I can support myself now with doing the thing I love. Yeah. Um, and for the longest time that was my goal. Yeah. And so. I need a new goal now, and it's um, it's kind of scary. It's kind of a weird situation to be in because um, it was like six years that I yeah. um, worked like extremely hard. I dropped everything else yeah. um, to get to this point, um, and so and now it's kind of like a um, like an empty feeling. Yeah, yeah. Well, and again, it, it goes back to the billion dollar question. It's like, uh, that's like an ex machina for your own life. It's like, um, once you solve the external pressures of living, then what do you have left to figure out? And it's like mm-hmm. all the subjective stuff, you know? It's like, what do you do with your time? What do you value? It's like, um, is it, is like, um, do you want to start valuing solving world hunger or do you want to become just super superficial and like, get plastic surgery and you know get like super fancy cars and stuff and mm-hmm. they're both the right answers depending on who you are but it's like um that external pressure is something that is actually like i was talking to a friend about this who has some money he has like enough money to never work again he was saying like i might go get a job at starbucks because i need something i need like some external pressure because mm-hmm. living this way is comfortable physically but existentially it's like i don't I don't have a direction. I don't have. I don't have a problem to solve. You know. Yeah. Um, and yeah, again, thinking that way is like, what the, what the heck? Like, meaning is the most important thing. Mm-hmm. You know. Um, maybe the struggle is the most important thing to, to embrace. And, yeah. Um, and, um, and creating problems for yourself too is kind of a, an ordeal to yeah. wrap your head around too. Like, oh man, do I really want to create more problems for yeah, myself? Yeah. Right. Or, like I'll probably be happier, but I don't know. There's there's some things that I want to get into that will definitely be creating problems yeah. for myself, and I think it'll be they'll be good. Um, like for example, I want to um, pick up piano again. I I played the piano for um, a few years when I was pretty young, yeah. and then I I stopped once it wasn't cool to do that anymore. Right. <laughs> so. <laughs> um, but I want to get back into it because there's like I, I really appreciate music yeah. and it would just be fun to um, be able to sit down and play like just have a few songs that I can play yeah again. yeah absolutely um, 
and be able to balance my my cre- creative sides that I have. Yeah, yeah. Right. Um, and then a similar thing with um, ceramics. I used to. That was all I did in high school. Really was. Um, uh, throwing stuff on the wheel and sculpting and stuff and um, I want to get back into that now like I I have the space now to have a, a little ceramic studio yeah um, and yeah I think it'd be good for me and it, it could be something that I don't make money on yeah it probably won't be um, or it might be um, but 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 you you actually might not want it to be. That's yeah, the thing. Yeah. yeah, and I have that freedom right. to choose. So yeah. I think that would be fun. It would be an investment to get. It actually might not be an investment. It might just be money thrown yeah. thrown in to yeah. do it, which is a little um, scary. But I know I'll love it because I always have. Yeah. I always did. Um, so things like that, and like learning to play the piano. Like yeah. I'm excited to get into the only problem is is what I do now takes so much of my time um, just to be able to support myself Um, I I have to be careful to like save time for it like I feel like if I get into ceramics I'm gonna go all in and just not paint for um, I don't know a few months a year or something or a few years yeah, yeah. Well, and, and or lose the interest. I'll probably, st- I'll still do it. I'll have to, but yeah. I won't be as excited about it because I'll fall in love right. with ceramics. Ceramics, yeah. Well, and again, it's that's such an interesting thing to struggle with. It's like, like you're good at painting, right? You, 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 and people buy your paintings and stuff, but you still would rather like there's an impulse to go and be, like, um, not as competent at something as mm-hmm. you are at painting. You know? Yeah. And it's like, um, like. Again, the, the thing that you're looking for in painting is not to make amazing paintings that, you know, like you know you can do. It's to like potentially, it, it's the process of learning how to do them or the process of seeing yourself actually get better. Mm-hmm. You know, that's the actual value you, you get from it versus like um, the actual end product of making a, a painting that somebody will buy for how much money they buy it for. Yeah. Um, it's definitely the process um, that is more fulfilling yeah than yeah. the end product yeah yeah and it's uh you will choose to you know put money into ceramics which is something you know you probably won't make money at for at all or at least for a while mm-hmm. and that will be more uh important to you than you know doing more paintings that you know will be able to make your life objectively more comfortable mm-hmm. you know um and uh and i would say that that's the correct decision you know that's like really admirable is to like see something that you're already good at and be like no I don't want to do that I want to make cups I want to you know um, yeah. play music yeah um, you know like you want, you want to express yourself mm-hmm. um, again I, I think it's uh, as it relates to my own life I think that that's the goal is to like not be judgmental towards the way I spend my own time you know it's like um, I like to draw and I like to do art but I don't necessarily want to do it professionally, and I don't have to make money off of it. Mm-hmm. You know, maybe the act of actually doing it and enjoying it is as much as it'll ever be, and maybe that's the best case scenario for me. You know, um, and I have to be okay with that, and, um, and that means like letting go of the ego of being recognized for um, doing art or getting likes or making money off of it or mm-hmm. something. You know. Um, yeah, yeah. It, it's weird. I um, so I used to have a part time job, worked like two or three days a week. Um, this was when I was still living at home with my parents, and um, so I I would work there just to make a little bit of money. Yeah. Um, and I could pretty much save all of it. Um, and then I I painted when um, when I wasn't working or after work. And um, having that, um, those like three days during the week where I was completely tied up and I, I had like nine to five of those three days where yeah. I could not um, paint and um, I was doing this thing that, I mean, it was, it was bearable, but, yeah. and, and I had great bosses and everything and people I worked with were nice, but um, it wasn't 
I wasn't passionate about it. Yeah. And it forced me to um, like spend those four days, three or four days um, outside of work, um, like painting as hard as I could, yeah. spend, like devoting all my time to it. Right. Um, because I knew like I was going to have like three or four days, yeah. two or three, four days of the week um, gone right. working this part time job. Um, but with all that being said, like I, I feel like I enjoyed painting more when I was going through that yeah. because I, I had like, there was just like so much struggle. Like I was, I, I had a studio, um, in my parents' basement. Um, I could barely see daylight. Yeah. So I had like this urgency to like work really hard and get out of there and, um, not have to work this part-time job yeah. um, because I um, like looking back it's different but like when in that moment I was like oh man this part-time job is not allowing me to paint more and not like get to my my dream scenario yeah. um, but yeah we, we, we talked about it already but um, it made me enjoy um, painting more I think yeah yeah absolutely um, yeah, and again, it's uh, the struggle of it was the thing that made it, it gave it more context, you mm-hmm. know, um, and it gave you like a reason to paint. And again, going back to the painting just being a form of communication, it's like it, it could have been fucking playing the guitar or like learning how to weld or mm-hmm. any like anything. And um, it like it wasn't the act of painting itself. Oh, it's very hot. Uh, it was it was the um, you know painting as it relates to improving your life, you know painting as it relates to like solving the problems you want to solve like Mm -hmm. like being able to buy a house and because you wanted to buy a house like painting was a way of you doing that and because of who you are the way you were raised the things that you value that you can't help you have to paint you know Mm -hmm. like you might not not even have a choice but yeah um and painting was the way of you of your brain like solving the hunger problem or solving the thirst problem or solving any of those problems you know Mm -hmm. um or solving the validation problem, you know, just wanting to like um, feel like you're on a path to growing as a as a person, you know. Yeah. Um, and I know for for me, it's like um, the thing that I found is the people that I admire most again are the people that like didn't necessarily they they didn't struggle, but they were super successful from the start. Like they're really good artists, and their parents helped them get into a fancy school, and then they just like got a fancy job mm-hmm. right out you know often those people don't like that setup and I don't admire it as much as somebody who just like did it because they loved it you know and it became yeah. successful that way mm-hmm. um, yeah um, yeah there is something about uh, the struggle and the um, pain of becoming a better painter and having a part time job that's more admirable than just like having me, uh, like the thing I tell people is like, I'm some of, I'm, I'm around like some of the best art teachers all the time. It's like in Southern California, I'm around Stan and mm-hmm. the list of every, like people that just come by the studio. And in spite of that, I actually can't get myself to paint all the time. I get fucking bored, you know? <laughs> and uh, at that point, it's not like an environment problem at all. It's like my, it's a me problem, you know? It's like, my ability, ability to see painting as something that's relevant to my own life, you know? Mm-hmm. Um, and in that context, it's like, um, you know, the more you kind of set yourself up in a perfect situation, like if you had a billion dollars and all the best people around you, that is not even close to a guarantee to being, like, living a meaningful life. How do you feel? Good. I feel like we've been talking about like the depressing side of it oh, yeah. for so long. I, I feel like we should try to like lighten it up somehow. Well, I, I think. I mean, I love art. I mean, yeah. like, like I, I guess I guess it's like a the meaningful side of all this stuff is important to talk about. But then there's the. I've been told I overanalyze stuff a lot, and it's good to do that though. Um, overanalyze and then get it back to big picture. Yeah, no, um, for sure. Yeah, you can. You learn a lot. Um, 
I, I just want to say, like, I I still have, like, a long way to go yeah. with my painting. It's not like I've arrived and I'm just, like, giving up or whatever. Um, I still have a long way to go. It's just, it's interesting. All of a sudden, like, my whole outlook on it has kind of changed now that I'm, like, starting to see some success in it. Yeah. Um, it's just, um, it's just different now. And I still have things to learn and I still have goals in terms of painting. Um, but, um, yeah, I don't know. I, I, well, I, I, I think they're growing, you know, it's yeah. like the natural process of all this stuff is I think people start out as starving artists and they stop being starving artists, you know, and they're like, and I think it's it's amazing to have finding meaning as a problem. Like if you have like if you're physically comfortable, that's amazing. That's great. It's like you don't have to worry about having polio or something. You know, that's great. And it's like um, I don't want to talk about uh, figuring everything out uh, survival wise is like something you shouldn't strive for because mm -hmm. I think it's like if everyone could eat and everyone could live comfortably, that's great. And if yeah. you figure that out for yourself, then that's amazing. Mm -hmm. um, and I guess what I'm saying is that, like, once you solve those problems, you're able to, like, zoom out more and think on, on things on a bigger scale. It's like um, the path to you doing murals, like we were talking about yesterday, becomes a lot more likely. Cause mm -hmm. It's like, oh, I have time to think about that now. Yeah. And, uh, um, or you, like, um, contacting Elon Musk and then him flying you to space <laughs> to be the first artist to, you know, planar paint the planet, <laughs> you know? <laughs> Yeah, um, that'd be cool. That'd be so, yeah. Elon, if you're if you're listening to this, uh, you know you should uh, fly Tad up to space and <laughs> have him paint the moon or something. Yeah, um, but that that's not um, that's not impossible. I like, know crazier yeah. things have happened. Yeah, um, yeah, but yeah, Elon, I know you're listening to this. <laughs> um, right. Yeah. I, again, I I. Uh, I think it's, it really is a balance. Like, obviously, people who have physical comfort and plenty of money do find meaning in the things that they do. Mm -hmm. I guess the depressing side of it, it might be just saying, like, hey, just pay attention to what you care about. Cause, like, if you care about painting, you're probably going to care about painting if you have a trillion billion dollars, and, you know, everything you'd ever want. How hot is it? It's pretty hot. Um... I don't know. I, I'm thankful to be here. I'm thankful to, you know, have the opportunity to live in a van and drive around the country. And, yeah. Um, it'll it'll bring. Um, I don't know. It, it'll give you like a. Once you're done with this trip, it'll. Um, it'll like open up. Something new. Like you won't be able to know right now, but like. Yeah. It'll either like invigorate you to start something or um yeah. like I don't know. I, I just I, I know that because right at the beginning when I started painting I would I would take those long road trips and just paint like yeah. all day and that was the only thing I was doing. Right. And I was I was just like trying to learn as much as I could from each painting I was doing. So it was it was exhausting, but super fun, and um, but I wouldn't give anything up to um, to like to not have had those yeah. experiences because those made me who I am today, and they they allowed me to meet the, some of the people that are still helping me yeah. today, or um, the connections I've made with galleries and things on those trips, yeah. and. Just doing, I've I, I talk, I've talked about this with um, people, and when I teach workshops and stuff, like right at the beginning, I um, I moved to LA for six months and lived um, on an air mattress in my yeah. brother's apartment, and he kind of supported me for like six months and just wanted me to paint yeah. as much as possible. I think he saw that as what he would have wanted for himself. Yeah. Um, if he had an older brother, he would have yeah. wanted that. And um, so that, along with those road trips I took, like just doing those few years of 
living that way, doing hundreds, maybe over a thousand, like, crappy paintings. Those were, um, that was just essential to, um, just, like, moving on and getting past that point and saying, okay, like, all that mileage, and it's not even, like, you can't even really put it into words what you learned in that time, but you just, like, got those bad paintings out of the way, and, um, and now you're, I was able to, like, um, all of a sudden, like, the paintings just, like, got a little bit better, and then once I noticed that, it was like, okay, cool, I'm making progress, but, like, those couple years of, like, not seeing any progress, those, like, thousand paintings where it was just, like, bad the whole time, um, it was, it was rough, but I didn't, I didn't really think about it that way in the, like, I knew I was going to improve at one point. Right. Um, but it's, it's so cool to look back on that, like, all of a sudden, like, six years have gone by since I started painting, and seeing those little, yeah, the um, the, the incremental, yeah, yeah, and, and seeing what caused what to happen, and, um, why certain things allowed me to improve, yeah, um, it's really interesting to look back on. Yeah, well, it's it's often things you'd never expect would be important, you know, mm-hmm. like um, things that might seem completely um, unimportant to painting while you're there end up being, like, one of the most pivotal moments in, in your mm-hmm. art career, you know. Um, and again, I, I, I'm always thinking it's like, I never expected to live in a van and drive around the country and have a podcast. Yeah. It's like, I... Uh, get horrible social anxiety and it's just like wow you know it's like wow this is strange you know and um and i suspect that you are i think you are right it's like this is going to lead to other things in a way that i never would have expected yeah uh, just as a result of like just doing something i enjoy doing something that i wanted to do and um and hearing it, that gives me a lot of hope and yeah. excites me because i like i'm the type of person that wants to have everything planned out yeah or to try to plan as far ahead as I can. Right. Um, in terms of, like, my life and stability and things like that, I try to. There's some things where I'm very spontaneous with, but hearing you say that, like, um, like, like what I'm doing now will lead to things that I can't imagine. Yeah. That, that gives me, like, hope and, um, um, I don't know, makes me excited to paint still. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Because, like, yeah. I yeah. I can keep doing these paintings not knowing where it, what it'll lead to. Yeah, yeah. Like, these paintings that I'm doing might um, lead to something that's completely off of the painting path, yeah. but that I'm super passionate about, and, um, yeah, and then that might be my um, ticket to, like, success in a way. Where absolutely. Well, it, and success I, in a emotional level too absolutely well i think it's a the thing that you'll be doing when like now and when you first started and in 10 years it's fundamentally going to be the same thing you're just painting pictures you Mm -hmm. know it's like it's strange that what you do on a day-to-day basis doesn't change but your scale changes just organically you know there's something elon musk said where it's like he uh the things he was doing when he was like 21 and 22 the science he was doing is the same science he's doing now as you know for spacex and tesla and stuff Hmm. and um, like you, you can feel however you want to feel about Elon Musk, but I think it's true that he's probably doing similar science just on a different scale. Yeah. Um, and as it relates to all this stuff, it's like you really can't control your own success. Like you can't, like you can do, you can't do big things that control your own success. All you can do is like be in the moment and care about the things you care about, and and do them. You know, and. I think the more I think about trying to plan out my own success, the less successful I'll actually be, like, successful, at least emotionally successful. And the more I just, like, live in the moment and speak honestly, that's when, uh, you know, ironically, um, I'm going to achieve more, I guess, traditional success and more emotional success. Mm-hmm. Um, and because I'm able to, like, enjoy my life more in the moment and I'm sp- be able to, I'm able to make higher quality things because I'm paying more attention to it. And, um, like, if you want to be a famous painter, it's like, 
whether you're doing giant murals on the moon or like painting a creek, the actual act of putting down paint is the same thing. Mm -hmm. you know? um, and um, to say that like you doing paintings in a creek somewhere is going to land you on the moon somewhere is such a like that's possible, right? Or it's you know, or you um, again achieving things that you could never even expect to achieve. You know, mm -hmm. it's, it's all possible. You know. Um, there was a, a man that was on the podcast. <laughs> He's immortalized. Um, that I, I think it's like a um, trying to pursue like a faith in who you are. Like again, if you're really into doing things that are conventionally very weird, you know, whether it's um, like pursuing art. Or, like, if you're really into swimming or juggling or making furry porn, you know, it's like, maybe that's the thing you're supposed to do, you know? And, um, and, um, and when people start telling you that what you're doing is wrong, they're often, like, more worried about, they're more jealous or envious of your success rather than um, wanting to mm. actually try and help you. Yeah. Um, yeah, it usually speaks more about their insecurities. Yeah. Than what they're actually making it seem like yeah, talking about. Yeah, for sure. Um, hmm. Life is strange. Yeah. It's it's weird how um after after seeing a little bit of um, stability and stuff from painting, all of a sudden the the um, the mindset or like the tone you get from other people yeah. changes. Like they don't. A lot of times. So before, when I was like really struggling, I'm, yeah. s I'm still struggling. But like when I was like really struggling to just learn and like get to like a decent level of yeah. painting um people would be like um like sympathetic and not yeah. sympathetic but like they would be um like oh what's your these are these are just some examples like what's your plan b like oh right. are you sure you don't need to go to school like right. um all these things that would like make you like question yeah, everything yeah. they're like oh well you're probably not gonna make it so like right. blah 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 like all these things that were like like really hard to hear yeah um and now um now that like I'm I'm selling paintings and I can buy my own food <laughs> yeah um and um now all of a sudden those people are like um they're like they come at you in like almost like a um it's a similar tone but now it's like they're almost like jealous in a way yeah they're like um like they see things that i'm doing and um they're still not like happy for me yeah um, right. And it's usually like painters are usually happy for painters. Yeah, artists are happy for artists. But like, like family friends and right. things, or um, like I've got some good friends that are happy for me. But like, um, like if I meet someone and say, "Oh, I, yeah, I'm a, I'm a professional painter." Yeah. Um, I don't know. I can't help but to. There's like something that you see. Right in the way they talk where they're yeah, just yeah. like um not I'm, cool with it yeah, yeah they're just like oh well you're, uh, you're just stupid oh yeah, <laughs> like, yeah I, like, I, I, I could have done that if I if I yeah. tried you know it's yeah. not that hard like you know? in their head they're thinking um like oh man I wish right. I could be like that and they could yeah they just have to they didn't make the sacrifices yeah well and it's like so many sacrifices you have to jump in well and, and often it's like the you being successful means to them, it's like, oh, I could have done that. Instead, I compromised. I didn't tell the truth, and I did something I didn't want to do. And now this person is doing the thing I wanted to do. You know, mm -hmm. and the reality of the planet is, people are resentful. Like, people 
kill other people. People try to take each other down. That's true, Mm -hmm. you know? And it's like, to say that you, that wasn't a version of that is probably incorrect, you know? It's like, again, going back to the depressing side of art, (laughs) like, like it's, um, I think it's a reason why I really admire painters is because it's so non-conventional and it's so, like, everyone deals with that, whether you're Craig Mullins or Kim Jong-gi or, you know, you or anyone else. It's Mm -hmm. like, everyone deals with that level of, like, oh, you're, you know, I don't know if you'll be able to do that, you know, they, like, Mm -hmm. suck their teeth and, like, oh, yeah, you know, oh, you should be being an accountant or something, Mm -hmm. you know, you should get, oh, you should get a backup plan, you know, just in case, or it's, like, yeah. Um, yeah. They don't mean anything by it necessarily, at least at first. They're just trying to be nice, you know. Mm-hmm. But, like, um, what it means for you to be successful means that, like, if you're successful, that means their worldview isn't the only right way to do it, which means they might be wrong, you know. Yeah. And if they're wrong, then it's like, oh, shit, the entire way I spent my life has been incorrect. Mm-hmm. Um, Definitely. It's cool to see, like, some people you can actually see... Um, their outlook and um i don't know mindset like the way they they start living yeah. starts to change a little bit when they um when they see and learn a little bit about um what i'm what i'm doing and pursuing and how i'm like starting to see little bits of success yeah it's cool to see that um kind of translate into other people's lives um and like it kind of gives a little bit of meaning too because um like i indirectly i'm i'm having an impact yeah um yeah just by being yourself yeah right? just by yeah um yeah just by being myself and yes yeah, it's, it's kind of cool well I'm, I'm not like forcing my ideas and things yeah, yeah. on someone they're just seeing it yeah, and, yeah. um it's um showing in my lifestyle well and i again i think it's that's the beauty of all this stuff is that you can live this like um live the life that you really want to be living you know live the life that's like really true to you and you can be um like doing exactly what you want and still have a really meaningful impact on the world Mm -hmm. you know and i feel like one of the keys to being successful is sustainability with the way you spend your time like if you really don't like doing matte painting, but that's the thing that's really popular, you should probably stop doing matte painting because you're not going to keep doing it, probably. Mm-hmm. You know, It's like, I'm inherently, I struggle with, you know, getting myself to be motivated a lot, and if it's not something I want to do, then I'm, not, I'm definitely not going to do it, you know? Um, uh, and, again, it, it's like the going back to the logic thing, you know? It's like logical to pursue the things that you know will be more successful but there the price to pay for that is um are you actually going to be able to keep doing them is that going to make you resentful is it going to come across in some way that you never could have um expected Mm -hmm. you know um and like knowing that other people resentful are resentful those people that say that shit to you it's like you're also a person you know you also have the same capacity to be kind of a dick I mean I you know like not you specifically but you know every everyone you know um and um yeah I think it's like easier for everyone else to be a loser and you for you to be right than maybe for you to be a loser and everyone else is you know wrong Mm -hmm. um, yeah it's annoying how people want to be the right one and then to put put other um, people down when they're like seeing the opposite but they they want to be the one they want to be the one that's right yeah yeah for sure or the the successful one or whatever yeah yeah Um, yeah people are strange Mm -hmm. Um, hmm. um that's cool. That's that's another thing I'm looking forward to just living and experiencing and learning about is just um, relationships and and people. Like I'm, uh, I don't know. I don't really know if I want to say an introvert, but um, a lot of times I am. But I, a lot of me, I'm realizing needs a lot of. Um, 
like relationship um, and uh, just communication. Yeah. Um, uh, yeah. I, I don't know. I don't really know how to um, describe it super well, but um, I'm because of that. I'm like. I'm like. I feel like I'm making the shift from introvert to extrovert. Yeah. And it's interesting to learn about people yeah for that reason um like i'm um like i'm only 25 and it it's cool yeah. to um see um like my my learning of that in the past few years yeah. and since since high school for example yeah. um so that's that's another thing that um will come with time and um learning more about myself and yeah. people that uh, mean something to me. Yeah, yeah. Well, I, again, I, um, I I think as an artist, it's like, you know, you're just communicating ideas. And it's like your uh, paintings are for other people to see. You know, you're trying to say things to other people, mm -hmm. which is a very extroverted thing to do, you know? Yeah. Um, and I think that... Um, Fundamentally, I think everyone's trying to achieve the same goal, and it's to like feel validated in themselves, whether it's like through drugs and alcohol and sex, or through pursuing their hobbies, or through their jobs, or whatever else. I just think certain ways of doing it are better for me than other ways of doing it. You mm -hmm. know, and um, the uh, problem is that again, when uh, somebody feels threatened by somebody else's success it means that their worldview might be compromised because they might be wrong you know? mm -hmm. and um, like we need people to figure out what our mission in life is we need to like bounce ideas off of other people and try things out and you know feel okay with just failing at failing at a bunch of stuff yeah um, and, yeah well I think this camera is going to die in a couple seconds okay. in a few minutes um, is there anything else you'd like to say um, I don't think so how should uh, people follow you on the internet um, I have a website uh, my name tadrets.com and then um I update my social media with new paintings more frequent more frequently than my website um, and you can just search my name on Facebook Instagram um, Twitter all those things I'm on Pinterest and stuff um, but yeah I, I try to be on everything and put my stuff out there share other people's stuff like on Pinterest I share my favorite paintings things yeah. like that um, Nice. Cool. Well, I appreciate you doing this, man. Yeah, thanks so much for having me. <laughs> cool. Uh, sweet. Okay, I guess I'll cut it there. Okay. okay.